I've been raised on the farm since day one, so I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? Doesn't get much better than that. Good afternoon. Hello, curling fans. My name is Roy McCusker. I either am right now or will be momentarily joined by Jeff Chambers. Bringing to you some quarterfinal action here from Swift Current S3 Group Curling Stadium Series. Quarterfinal between Stefania Constantini and Skylar Ackerman, Ackerman, Ackerman's team from Saskatchewan playing out of Saskatoon. Stefania Constantini. Italy. Pretty basic first end here, no guards in play. Teams trading hit and rolls, they'll try to feel out this sheet. First end here of an eight end game. Move from our audiences from YouTube, Facebook, CBC Gem, of course. Thank you for turning, tuning in. See you live curling. Thanksgiving Monday. Stefania Constantini qualifying through the B. One loss this weekend so far. Four wins, five games total. Skylar Ackerman, no losses. Four straight wins to qualify through the A. Four games on the ice for Team Skylar Ackerman. Both teams quite familiar with the ice conditions. They'll have played a few different sheets at this point. Conditions, by the way, have been notably excellent. Very, very high quality. Uh, lots of precise shot making, lots of good, very good consistency. Sweepers can operate quite confidently knowing what the ice is going to do. Our watches are trustworthy, and we have really seen the rewards of, of good ice making here this weekend with some really, really interesting ends where nearly every shot is made. It comes down to tactical decision making at that point, so. Us fans have been really entertained by this. Team 
Vicentini rolling out on their previous hit attempt. Allowed Skylar Ackerman to get a look at a draw weight shot to the wing. Vicentini continuing to hit. Hammer here in the first end. of, you know, the world's best team, best players. They've, they've climbed the ladder. Stefania winning a gold medal in mixed doubles at the Olympics. Bringing Italy their first curling medal. Jeff, is that you? Hey, sorry, yes, I made it here at technical, technical difficulties here, but we're rolling along here, looking forward to watching a great game here. I see they're playing a pretty safe end in the first one, keeping it pretty clean. Yep, the first four rocks all placed the rings. Traded back and forth, Skylar Ackerman got a bit of a look at it. Half the wing. But other than that, trading hits in this first end. Yeah, just getting a feel for the ice. The ice has been absolutely fantastic right through this whole weekend, and uh, it's pretty great to see. Great ice maker, and uh, the rocks are very solid too. So, um, yeah, the, their teams are noticing they're able to make a lot of great shots out there, but normally in that first end, people are still trying to get that feel and comfort. So, not, shock, yeah, not shocked to see this strategy at all. No, and I, I noticed the same thing I'd mentioned before you joined on here, that, wow, the ice conditions have really been excellent. Uh, you can tell as a fan, just due to the, the shot making, I've, I've seen so many ends this weekend already, where nearly every shot was made. And the outcome of the end, I felt the decision making and just the exactness, preciseness of the result. That's a sign of good ice. No, oh, absolutely. I was fortunate enough to uh, play this weekend and uh, experience the ice as we put in a local team to uh, to play a little bit and I noticed when we played against the Clyder team they uh, I said after about five ends I've said they've made more doubles this game than I could possibly count and uh, the only way you're making that many great doubles and angles and things like that are, are with great ice and uh, some good rocks. Yeah, it really seems to be responding to sweeping quite well as well. I've seen a lot of, yeah, rocks held straight by sweeping and dragged further than I thought they might go, so. It... Yeah, at least the, uh, the ice surface here leads to those that are uh, good sweeping technique. Um, you really notice it with the younger teams that, uh, with, the, with the strong sweeping, how, how much further they can the drag the rock along. And, and also the old uh, classic corner sweep and uh, angle sweep or curving, as many put it, um, is also pretty effective on this ice. You uh, notice a lot of the better sweeping teams being able to take advantage of that. So uh, again, great ice surface, and uh, I know the teams are, are loving it, and uh, yeah, we should be in for some good shot making. Very cool. I've noticed as well, uh, this team, Stefania Constantini, earlier they're playing Jap the Japanese team, uh, Sasaki. They were playing very, very aggressively without hammer, always relying on themselves to make the next shot, no matter how many opposing stones were in the ranks. They just knew as long as they had a center guard, they could make the next shot, make the next shot, and they had a trouble and they hit. Blank is successful. 
nothing, nothing. Zero, zero. Headed to end number two here in Swift Current. We're for agriculture. For growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. Houses are painted or are they logo. Our events are always painted houses, but in the future coming out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any trilling club. You can get your advertisements on there, and usually after the first year, the houses are paid for. It's all free money for you. So hopefully, check it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house logo. Back, second end here. Basic blanked first end to start us off. If we're not careful, we're headed that way again. Our first two rocks are in the corners. Stefani Constantini might experiment with throwing a center guard here. They might not. Might play it right into the rings again, but looks like Skip Stefania Constantini has her broom on the top of the button, so we will see another draw into the rings here. like another end of rocks in the rings nothing up front team ackerman getting that roll they're looking forward to the wing right. i see we're back in action here in the second end and they've uh, chosen to go to a cleaner end once again a lot of times we'll see in the even ends that uh, teams will take a little bit more gamble and try to lay it down there a little bit with uh when especially when you have the hammer but they've chosen to keep it pretty clean so don't imagine we're going to see too much wild action here, but uh, you just never know with a couple of, if there's a miss or two. Yeah, it reminds me of the previous game I saw of, of Stefania Constantini. A lot of this early on from her, waiting, waiting, probing the other team, waiting to see if they take the initiative, make a more, um, you know, make a call that signifies they they really want to score that end. And here we go. We will see a corner guard. Perhaps Team Ackerman was just waiting for the, the top of the four foot, eight foot to be clear of any obstacles before they, they made this call.
unfortunate hog rock for Team Ackerman means that Stefani Constantini will get a chance at putting a force on here in the second end. Coming into the rings. Line two points, Ackerman will try to wrestle back control of this potential blank end. Otherwise, they'll need to rely on their skipper to create some type of frozen tap back angle scenario where they can try to tempt Team Constantini into ignoring this going in the ring. But how conservatively uh, Team Constantini has played so far? I hope they're going to get that opportunity. some kind of miss. Sweep. Get both stones moving. Pushing things too uh, too aggressively here. Definitely taking their time, making sure they're confident in the ice and themselves before they make too aggressive of a move here. It's actually Skylar Ackerman's team who said enough of this. Uh, exchanging hits in the rings, we're going to throw a corner guard see if we can make something happen to get the score to win the second and even end. Bot with that guard coming up short. The initiative fell back to Constantini. Oh, two to the rings, and after trading a few more hits, Team Ackerman was able to get a double takeout. Reopening the blank opportunity and the satisfying result for this open end for Team Ackerman. her sweepers to control that rock, allowing everyone on the team to get a read of what that spot on the ice is looking like. Sometimes you don't get as good of information when you throw a, a rock at a big weight hit. Stay straight no matter what. And that time they threw a nice uh, control weight, maybe heavy bumper, the whole team gets to read that spot. Routine shot. 
gaining some valuable information for later in the game and in the process. Pretty smooth delivery. A little more weight thrown on this shot. And perhaps partially as a result, they roll out of the rings. This is going to allow Stefania Constantini to get a look at the draw path. What's, what's the draw weight like in the second end here? The Italian team will get to find out here as they try to place one in the rings. Not a very big pressure shot here. They'll simply force Team Ackerman to uh, shoot their blind attempt at a real target instead of whipping it through the rings. Sweepers reading the ice, heavy clean. Should be thinking to themselves, what if, what are we going to do in this exact spot on the 8th end when we need to draw for the win? This is the practice that they get. And the rock will cruise a little heavier than they anticipated. That, that sweep halfway down the ice was a clean at least. Heavy clean perhaps. I don't think they, they really anticipated that rock going that deep. However, the tactical result is just fine. It does occupy the rings. Skylar Ackerman will have to throw a blank attempt on this rock. So, as far as the uh, the need goes, Team Constantini achieving achieving their goal of making Skylar throw this rock, and they learned a little bit about the draw path in the process. Here in the second, Team Ackerman to carry the hammer once again to the third end. Just a really clean looking side. Skylar Ackerman could have kept that going the whole way down the sheet if she wanted to. Hits half the stone, successful blank attempt. 0-0 zero, zero, heading into the third end. Team Ackerman, two blanks in a row to start this game. That's questions about if our houses are painted or are they logo. Our events are always painted houses, but in the future coming out, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any trilling club. You can get your advertisements on there. And usually after the first year, the houses are paid for it's all free money for you. So hopefully check it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house look. We're for agriculture, for growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. start to this game so far other than trading hits and hit and rolls in the house <laughs> excuse me <laughs> other than trading hit and rolls in the house Skylar Ackerman the team so far to make a move they attempted a corner guard with the second stones in the second end there the corner guard did come up light and Stefania Constantini was able to occupy the house with two rocks, thus forcing another hitting end. Team Ackerman able to make a double takeout, keep the blank attempt alive, and they did. Skylar 
Markman makes the blank, takes the hammer into this third end. And center guard. An attempted draw to the wing from Team Ackerman. That came up just a little bit short. That's fine though. That rocks in a potentially valuable position for Team Ackerman as a, as a low corner guard. Team Constantini attempting a draw around their center guard, coming a little bit deep and outside. It's still a made shot, but um, not quite the specifics and the result that they were looking for. Light and inside, killer combination. Means a rack on this card. Team Stefani Constantini able to make another play on their center guard setup here. Looking for that steal or force. Very likely someone's going to score this end with two center guards in play. A full sweep the whole way down. Burns, Team Constantini. Real nice shot. Top eight foot slightly overlap with their rock on the button. Both behind cover. Looking to move some yellow rocks in the rings. Unfortunately, they blast right by. It will still be two Constantini rocks in the rings. Team Skylar Ackerman will hope to make some type of action happen with a run back or a double. At this point in the end, prime scoring positioning is totally dominated by Stefani Constantini's team. Sailing quite deep. That guard attempt looked more like button weight. And as a result, an opportunity missed. A chance to clear out the trouble from the forefoot for Skylar Ackerman. Just looking at using this stone to roll behind the left side of the center guard. Understanding that it's unlikely there will be a black or an open house to deal with. Decision time. There, there is a double to clear the forefoot and roll to the right side. You can see Skylar uh, signaling with her broom. I think that's what they've decided on. That will clear the forefoot of opposing stones, regain a bit of uh, control back in the house. The other option, of course, is to hit this uh, front yellow rock on the left side, roll behind the red center guard, and try to score two or more points that way. The 
Sweeping this hard, whole way down. They end up going the opposite way. They're intending on hitting the outside of that yellow rock. Rock over curled a bit, ended up in a pretty good position still. Only one yellow rock was removed, so Team Constantini still with the power in the four-foot scoring area at this point in the end. Third rock thrower, Marta Lodesorto. Delivers her soft weight hit. Outside sweeper already working on this rock. They will be getting a bit of curl. Looking for a little more. Decent results. They are able to remove the redstone. Roll to the open wing, which was likely guaranteed in that type of shot. They would have had to play very soft weight to get a near nose result, thus risking not removing the stone at all. Choosing to take the safe way, they'll just remove it and roll out to the outside. That'll give Ackerman an opportunity to roll in behind the center guard. Try and set up her two points, understanding that it won't be an opportunity to clear all these yellow stones. shove outside there had to go with a plan B ended up rolling to the outside maintaining pretty good position as we can see those angles they may have loaded up a double if that front of the red is contacted I think both of those yellow stones behind it clear the rings so team Constantini line two right now as it stands but Really big sweep here. Trying to coax as much curl out of it as possible. Now they feel they've come a little too deep. And I think they have. They've set up this loaded double takeout where the shooter would roll into this yellow, yellow rock in the forefoot and perhaps even remove it from the rings. A type of triple takeout available here for Team Ackerman. This would really swing the end in their favor, removing all yellow stones from play. With only two Team Constantini stones to come. Big swing in this game. Biggest shot of the game so far. Kaya Kennedy with an opportunity to make a big shot for her team here. Good weight on this stone. Definitely enough to make the triple. Outside sweeper. Trying to get some curl. And she will blow right by. Right through the hole, as we can see on the right-hand side there. An opportunity to make a triple. Oh, yeah. Decision time for Stefania Constantini. They know they just got away with one. Skylar Ackerman blowing that rock right by. Everything. There is a triple takeout loaded up on those yellow stones. So Team Constantini will likely have to move something here. They'll have to move their stone in the top four. Perhaps rearrange the angles on the outside, but... You would think some play down the center line is coming to maintain control of the forefoot 
without the fear of losing all your stones to a, uh, a triple takeout. Worthwhile, lengthy discussion there. This is a big moment in this game. That missed opportunity represents quite a swing. Stefani Constantini was about to be making a shot against two Ackerman counters. Now, she's still lying three, and will look to put a rock in the perfect spot in the forefoot on this intern drop half. Sweepers have been on this one, more or less the whole way. Little reprieve now. Inside sweeper still taking possession of the rock, trying to drag every bit of, of distance they can out of this thing. It is going to come up short. All right, Team Jeff Constantini. Back here to check things out, and uh, quite a situation you've got going on here. Absolutely. Jeff, it's been quite an end as it's as it's developed. Um, this this call, this hit right here from Skylar Ackerman was just attempted by third Kaya Kennedy, and she unfortunately put it through the wickets, right through the the hole, blew by everything. Yeah, there's actually a couple different ways you could look at playing this. You could actually come in off the yellow, off the top four foot, rather than using the red first. But we'll have to see what happens mm. with this one. Interesting that Team Constantini, after getting away with uh, that miss, or sorry, what I should say is after uh, after the Team Ackerman miss, failing to remove their, their stones, they elected to play this intern draw, leaving the angles exactly like they are. Yes, sir. You normally don't want to give your, the, your opposition the same shot over again. Looks like she's got a piece of this one. Ah. I read the angles wrong. I thought that uh, yellow was, was loaded up to come straight back on the other yellow behind it. Still leaves a pretty good opportunity for them to move these out. If she hits that middle one first and kicks the one out to the side, she'll be sitting three. Absolutely. Won't completely take away the draw path for Skylar Ackerman, but will definitely determine the, the exact path she'll need to take and make it more challenging, that's for sure. Intense look of concentration. Stefani Constantini. Terrific shot. Puts that rock exactly where she wanted to. Shoots both Ackerman stones out of the rings. Constantini lying three. Force Ackerman to a shot for only a single point. Well, after that other miss, she'll be very happy that she has a wide open shot here and uh, taking the one isn't the end of the world. And uh, she'll just want to make sure that she's Settles down in the hack, throws a good shot, and uh, moves on.
so easy in this situation to uh, slow down your momentum a little bit and uh, try to throw a little bit too much control weight. So you got to watch for the over curl here. And as long as the sweepers get on it early with these ice conditions, this should be a pretty routine shot for her. Nothing early from the sweepers. Meaning is looking pretty good. Light clean. Going to try to curve it in here a little bit. Let's see Skylar go whoa, 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 right out of her hand. She will catch the second. Oh, and just spin up. Not setting shots down. Will, will be a steal of one for Stefania Constantini. You know, back and forth end. Yes, get some excitement going there for sure. Skylar Ackerman will maintain hammer for the fourth end in a row when we come back. We've just got our shipment of logos here in for our next event, which is going to be the mixed double. As you can see, there's a few of them. There's roughly 20 logos per sheet to be put in for the mixed doubles, along with a couple extra little dots. But all our logos come from Jet Ice. They are the best logos to put in. We use them around the world, and they're very easy to install. As you can tell, this is the center ice logo that's going to be going in for the world. This is about a four footer by 10. It's going to look like a million dollars. Their colors on their logos are always nice and vibrant. And like I said before, very easy to put in. We're for agriculture, for growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. Welcome back, fourth end. Saskatchewan's Skylar Ackerman, Italy's Stefania Constantini in the quarterfinal here. S3 Group Curling Stadium Series. My name's Rory McCusker, here with Jeff Chambers, and we've, uh, we've seen a game come alive. First two ends, pretty routine, hit and roll, hit and roll, blank attempt. And then that third end, really back and forth. Some fun angles, some interesting shots, and that ended up being Skylar Ackerman roll out to give Connie Constantini one point. Absolutely. After that, uh, giving up a steal of one point, we're probably going to see a little more aggression from the Ackerman team here coming in the home end. Typically in those home ends, you want to set it up for, uh, you know, a little bit more aggressive to see if you can get a good score in the even ends and uh, first corner goes up. So that's a sign of what we're probably going to see in this end. So it should be action packed for sure. Team Constantini really not pushing play that much so far. Content with leaning back, just taking care of the opposition stones without hammer, not wanting to leave anything sticking around. And was able to apply some pressure last end. We'll try to do the same here with an open shot at uh, protecting their rock in the scoring area. I see this back sweep technique a lot from uh, from the sweeping sweeping players on Constantini. Really pushing pushing the momentum back into the rock. I, I suppose trying to get some more curl. Yeah, it's definitely a technique. It's actually a technique that I've been using for the last two years myself uh, when I get out there. Just because with all the research done out there, it's it's the slight scratching of the ice surface, very minuscule, but somewhat of a scratch surface that the rock will grab and by having your brooms going on those same angles in theory uh that's going to help that rock fill in there more so i guess it just depends on your beliefs on it uh it's something that i believe in because i've seen in action and understand how we get the curving action of the rocks but uh, i guess it's uh in what you believe too and what you like to see coming down the, the ice 
it's fun to play a sport where there's still a little bit of unknown, a little bit of uh, figuring out yet to do. All the secrets haven't been discovered yet. There's still a lot of kind of advancement happening in front of our eyes when it comes to curling. So it's it's fun to be involved in a sport where you get to learn and kind of pioneer the new ways of doing things. It is. There's a lot of uh, there's research going on out there, but uh, definitely not near as much research. Obviously, the funding isn't there to do those research products or projects like there is in other sports. Uh, but they're definitely, everybody's trying to get the edge. I know a lot of research is done right out of here in Saskatchewan. And uh, we've been a big part of learning the different uh, through testings and things. So it's very exciting for the game and you're right, there's so much more to learn. We've had some amazing shots making and games in the past. And thinking back, those teams will wish they would have known maybe a little bit more about the sweeping techniques, especially back with the hairbrushes and, and things like that. So pretty interesting stuff for sure. Absolutely. I always make fun of my mother, Joe McCasker. Uh, they, the most famous shot of Sandra Schmuller's career was this in-off in the Olympic trials yes. to qual qualify. And uh, yeah, the most famous shot of, of her career plays over and over again on highlight channels and they're sweeping the wrong direction. They're sweeping it to make it curl as the sweep call comes on. The well, back then they were curl. just, ex they are expecting it to curl a little bit more. So they would have iced it differently too. So it's, uh, it's, it kind of uh, just got built into the plans and without even really realizing it. So <laughs> it's a good point, especially with that, that was a takeout weight there. So, and we all obviously know too, with takeouts that, uh, you can't really affect that uh, the direction too much, anything over bumper weight. So uh, they're sure. pretty safe regardless with that. And it, it definitely will be a shot that's will go down in history forever. So. <laughs> when we really found out how effective the sweeping was, was quite a few years ago. I actually don't know how many, but the McEwen team, especially when they went to the hard line and the illegal, well, they weren't illegal at the time, but they were just, it was like a steering wheel. The teams just could control the rock all the way down the ice. And uh, they were literally having 100% games at uh, that year. And they knew they had to change something. So they went to a softer material now. And it's a lot harder to curve the rocks. But uh, for a little while there, you could, it was like having a joystick down at the other end if you knew what you're doing. That's, that's exactly right. I remember the McEwen dominance, uh, Denny Newfeld with his huge muscles just pounding that broom into the ice. Absolutely. Hearing, hearing the rock. Uh, yeah, and that was McEwen. A lot of teams had particular success with that era of like 100% shot making, like you said. Absolutely. They figured it out. They did a lot of testing themselves and, and uh, basically put Hardline on the map for sure for curling. Uh, just it was just a, a huge, huge advantage to use the equipment then. Yeah, and curling has always been a, a fluid sport. There were some periods where change was not as welcomed as others, but it's it's smart to um, understand what's having a certain impact on the game and in, in what way, and is it really beneficial to what we love about our sport, which is the skilled shot making team shots. So seeing the sweeping have that much of an effect was a good thing in many ways, but as we can as we can reasonably understand, there had to be something that something had to be done to uh, keep the game in a in a state that you know it's it's tough to describe, but absolutely like no. It was bringing to the fact that if uh, well, it still shows you put somebody like Ben Hebert on a, a brush and uh, how much difference he can make over others and that's why so many people have got uh, especially the front ends have got so big now in the men's curling uh just pure strength we've seen it seen it in the ladies curling as well but it's just become a huge advantage but here we got a little bit of a miss here that left the corner there so not sure if she's going to go after shot rock or maybe go around there she is so she's going to take that uh aggressiveness i know everybody would go wow that rock is right by the button why would we play it but uh if you play the open one uh, you pretty much are losing all shot at the, the, the two points, which their uh, team Ackerman truly wants to get in the fourth end here. So they're going to play a little aggressive, try to get around the corner and for a miss and generate their, their deuce that way. Yeah, recognizing there's not too much danger up front either. And worst case scenario, they are likely going to have some kind of shot at one. This one got thrown a little wide, so it's 
going to stay in the open unless they can really get some curvature going, but uh, just a little bit of a in out toss there. So it's going to leave it out in the open, I believe. And a little short. So this is definitely going to change things up if they can get one into top four buried. It's a lot of but it's a lot of pressure back on Ackerman. Marta Lotusorto, the third rock thrower for Team Constantini. A good looking shot forming here. We're expecting yeah. to see a pretty close game here with these two teams as I was looking at their records and the rankings are so close this year, and uh, Team Ackerman's been on a, a winning streak this whole weekend, so we knew it would be a really tight game, and uh, they're showing that so far. A little bit of chasing maybe for Ackerman so far, but uh, still early enough in the game, but let's see if she can get some action here. Maybe she'll try to hit that back one and roll underneath, so they're going to have a little discussion here and see what they like the looks of. That uh, looks like mm -hmm. Skyler's call, which... I think is a pretty good choice, but uh, yeah, you have to make your choice right now on on how you want to play that. Third Kaya Kennedy just uh, coming down, singling at the the earlier thrown rock, her her light draw, asking Skylar, hey, would you like me to get this out of the way? We can maybe run this back, try to clear things out, clear things up for your rock. But it looked like Skylar responded back with, well, no, we want to, we're in it now. This is our way to get two points is to roll under this pile here. So. Let's go for it on your your stone here. You know, it's trying to create two last minute with the skips two rocks, but they're going to try to count this one right here with a hit and roll. Looks like she got this one outside just a little bit too. Actually, quite a bit this one. Kind of just struggling a little bit with that in turn there by the looks of it on the release, but that'll make things a little bit tougher now. The uh, missed triple attempt in the previous end was an in turn as well, which she did throw outside of the broom. That might be something that they'll definitely want to talk about. And I see the coaches in the background there, so keeping track of that for sure and maybe just a small technical issue that can be worked out and have a strong last half of the game now they're just a full team discussion on this one normally you wouldn't need the whole team especially when you're sitting two and sitting in such great shape but they don't want to lose any any problems, so they want to make sure they're covering all their angles on where they put this rock. Yeah, understanding that the previous three ends had been, for the most part, until a few mistakes and a few um, come arounds made, pretty open. So they're sensing the moment, knowing that this is a, a very, this would be a big end to, to steal a few points if they can ever manufacture it. No, absolutely. It looks like it just a top four shot would be great. If they could get edge on edge with that rock or even just a little bit under, it would probably be just perfection. But they just want to get something in the way here for them and see what Skyler can do with it. Skyler's going to have one opportunity to sort of clear things out of the way and, and set something up for have, her to have an open shot for one must be the, the hope at this point. So Team Constantini, wondering if they can put a rock in a perfect position where they're still going to have control over the forefoot. Even if Skylar Ackerman makes her next shot. So 
Fine, you're pretty, following uh, this one down. Pretty happy with it so far. Looks like it's going to cross on the front one a little bit. Well, she can definitely open this up, and it might be pretty close. It's hard to tell with her angles here, but probably going to go over the top of the back one, but at least it would be a completely open house for her, and the double is pretty easy to do there with three-quarters of a rock for sure. They might be looking at here if there was ever an opportunity to make the double and get a little bit of a, a bonus roll inside. Well, their angle's better than ours. Uh, right now, it looks like that's overlap. But uh, yes, if there's room there, that would be a terrific chance. But they're looking at it. But, uh, sure, from this angle, doesn't look like it'll get across there. But there must be more room there than it looks. Yeah, they're confident they can get rid of these two rocks. It's just a matter of where they want to put the shooter afterwards. If they can find a, a nice spot, and maybe somehow have a ch chance at, at counting it on her second, on her next stone. There's Kaya just showed the other side, which I definitely think is a much, much easier shot. They can hit right where almost where that broom is. Mm -hmm. Then they're just going to be able to hit and roll over to the side, forcing Constantina into hitting the open rock, and then uh, that should open up the back one for, for their points, though. Yeah, I guess if you didn't think there was a realistic chance of you counting this stone, you may as well just make the double in the, the most reliable way you can. Yeah, at this point, I don't think she's thinking two. I think she's thinking, man, we got to get our one and uh, get out of this end and, and reload, at least with the tie game. One point game here. Skylar Ackerman's first rock here in the fourth end. very close to a triple if she would have got up there to where she wanted to hit that rock now that we see that action so i think a little thicker to see that yeah a little thicker on that top one and it would have been such angle off that uh, secondary one and it looks like it would have chipped it i knew it would be very close but uh you're never mm -hmm. too sure until it actually happens but uh yeah that just had to come up about two more inches and i think we'd see a totally clean house Still a very serious opportunity here for Queen Constantini to line line something up, make a very difficult shot for one, and and really put the thought of giving up two in Skylar Ackerman's head. Absolutely, absolutely. I miss where she finally tapped where her ideal spot is, but uh, probably close to just biting the eight foot, uh, even the twelve, just to make the draw really tough. Do you ever try to tuck a piece and show a third to a half of that back stone, or is that just giving your opponent too much backing? Well, it definitely would be a thought. The old uh, Christmas tree adage that they uh, they use where you, you draw it in. Mm -hmm. That's what they're looking for, actually. They're trying to go for what we call the Christmas tree, uh, just so that you're showing a piece of each rock so that there's no clear shot for each. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely an opportunity, if you're a little heavy, to create more of a pocket and that could be what's happening here now i think they're going to plan b it's not curling quite as much as they want so now they'll just use it as that uh that top card yeah but now you got to decide if uh if you like to draw around there or take on the double so this is typically a uh, percentage shot that the, the skip will determine because they're the ones throwing it a lot of teams would be run down there and play this double and uh, there'd be some teams that would stand there and, and play the draw around even with the rocks touching the four foot. So it depends on your style mm -hmm. of play, but they're going to go with the double here and hopefully make the yeah. yellows disappear. Yep, 
Yeah, with this shot, weight, weight not being the only variable here, that rock is deep enough and kind of on the outside of the center line enough that you would probably have to change your path to the forefoot a little bit from what you were used to throwing. For example, your last stone draw to the button earlier in the in the day. Be a bit of a new path. So they'll Absolutely. take on the hit. I think the safest play, we'd see a majority of teams, I would say that 90% of teams would be going for this with for this uh, double instead of the draw. But uh, there are those ones out there that are really, really, really confident with that draw. But I believe this is the percentage shot. They like it out of the hands. Should be pretty really close. Sweep. Oh, it's really, really sweeping on. Trying hard to hold it, but not going to quite do it. Had to jump on that a little bit earlier before the curvature of the rock. But uh, yeah, steal of one there for from the team from Italy. And uh, they're going to move on to a 2 nothing lead. Yep, Skylar Ackerman will try hammer for the fifth time, fifth end in a row with Hammer when we come back. We're for agriculture, for growers, doers, whatever it takers. We're for doing things with purpose. We're for the little guy with big guy dreams. We're for agriculture. We're for you. Nutrien Ag Solutions, leading the field. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Welcome back, everybody. Another steal for Stefania Constantini. This one well earned. Uh, control of the top of the house for most of the end. Ends up forcing Skylar Ackerman to a pretty tough double for her single point. Ackerman removes one stone, but cannot remove the second. It means another steal for Stefania Constantini. Just a little update on the other semi-final game for the, the women's. We've got Team Ha from Korea taking on Team Tisdale from Regina. And Ha is up two, two to one after three ends. They're just playing down in four right now. Other action, we've got a team from Korea and Japan, so Jung from Korea and Yanagiswa from Japan. Team Japan is up 4-1 to one in their playing in the fourth end as well. And then we've got Team Laycock playing against Nap in the other semi-final, and Laycock is up 3-2 to two over Team Nap and sitting pretty good as they're in four with Hammer. Mm. So lots of great action going right across. A lot of close games. Great semi-final action. A lot of the top teams all left. A lot of the top seeded teams all still in the event um, as they're enjoying like the great ice surface that uh, Jason Broughton and his ice crew have uh, given to us here, right here in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. For sure, yep. Notably excellent ice. 
That uh, that Laycock Knapp game. That's those are two interesting teams, especially at this tournament. Uh, Kelly Knapp seems to just take another step every year, getting better and better. Uh, that Laycock team, a lot of experience here in the current. So I'm sure that's a, a highly skilled game going on over there. Absolutely. The guys took a little bit of an advantage and uh, they went golfing yesterday at the Elmwood Golf Club and just enjoyed an afternoon off and some great weather here. It's not normal uh, for when you're at curling events to have 20 degree perfect weather outside. So the guys definitely took advantage of that. <laughs> yeah, good team building to do something together away from the rink as well. Absolutely. You got to make sure that you have your recharge moments. You can't just go hard, hard, hard all the time. Uh, the brain needs a break and the bodies definitely need a break from the, the curling action. I can attest to that as my body is so sore from playing those games. <laughs> just got to be careful to not take your golf game too seriously and waste some frustration on, on a golf game instead of saving it for the rink. <laughs> that is true. Both very frustrating sports for sure. Just when you think you've got it, something can go wrong. So <laughs> I talk sweet. with my curling I talk with curling friends all the time about why do we choose these uh, these precision games, these games like like I got some competitive five pin bowling friends, that's another exact sport where you need to be on the ball constantly. Golf, but repetitive motion, good swing thoughts. Even something like billiards playing pool or something like that. It just seems like curlers and golfers and bowlers and Something about Canadian sport that just the more difficult it is, the more the more addicting it is as well. Absolutely. Well, all those sports you mentioned, none of them are reactive sports. And uh, so you're not reacting to situations that you always have the time to create your own situation. And that's where the mental game gets so tough. Um, whenever you have time to actually think about what you're going to do, a lot of times that uh, we overanalyze and, and uh, that's when it gets stressful. So, yeah, we and we know the power is in our own hands to play to play perfectly, and and you know those standards. You end up holding yourself to that standard once you've once you've hit it once. Once you know that you can you can do something well if you just put your mind to it. Nothing else is uh, satisfactory. You know you want to get in that zone every time. Well, we have a rare miss here from from the team yeah. from Italy here. So that's just going to open it up. Uh, Skyler was very determined to uh, use that corner and ignore all the uh, yellow rocks and it definitely paid off for her there and now she still has that corner there. So now they're going to decide if they want to hit and just split the rings. Uh, a lot of teams might want to take a little more aggressive approach if they're looking for a three ball and actually draw another one in behind the corner to set up for a possible three. A little early in the end for that but uh, that would definitely be an option. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're going to choose to hit the open one and just stay there and see if they can uh, just go shot for shot for a little while. Trying to hold that sweep. Looks like we're going to get a roll. Might be a little bit too much of a roll, though. Let's see if we can hang it on. All right. Good enough to sit second shot, so... Team Ackerman looking in great shape so far. Yep. Kept her weight on the nice side of normal there. Able to control that rock. Well, they like the looks of this one. Anytime you're on and off the sweep, you know you're very, very close to making your shot. It's a great sign when you're a sweeper and uh, the skip is calling you on and off and on and off because you know darn well that you are going to make that shot. <laughs> I'm gonna call, looks like a call is for 
bumper weight or board weight, depending on uh, where you're from, what you want to call it. But uh, a nice little short controlled weight, see if they can stick around, keep the pressure on. Rory, have you ever done some research to find out who and what calls bumper and board and why they call it control and house and where all the right when, right, came from? <laughs> right when you mentioned it, I started thinking about it. And yeah. now I've, I've heard both. So unfortunately there you can see the weight was not strong enough. So that was closer to back line, actually maybe closer to hack just with how much they hit there. As soon as you take that weight off, the curl is going to definitely take off and uh, not doesn't matter how strong a sweeper you are, you're not going to be able to hold that rock when you, there's that much weight taken off a shot. So just a little over curl and caused a little bit of a miss, but uh, still in play and still will cause some grief for Team Italy here because they still have to try to get rid of that and that's not easy to do. Yeah, it's going to take an extra shot for Team Ackerman to, to count their rock in the top 12 foot now. New Constantini will chase this one out in the wings. You can see the weight really coming off of this. Yeah, they took a very wide look at that to try to bring it around. So almost great shot. They just needed a little bit more weight there. So I think they I think they I ran think into they managed, they managed to get it out into a second shot now. So but this yep. allows Ackerman to still sit too with a little bit of a hit and roll over. I don't think Team Constantini was expecting that much weight to come off of that stone. They were kind of just on and off of it on the wings there. Weight wasn't really a concern until it really was. Yeah, there's no significant frost or anything, but just when you get out that, uh, that far out, uh, there's just no rocks go down there and the ice gets kind of dead. So uh, definitely, definitely brought some weight off. This looks like a solid shot coming in here. They can get it to move just a little. They'd like a little bit of roll in. Good solid shot. Left just enough showing that Constantini can chew to remove this. Although they might be better off just making a draw into the forefoot right where Stefania's got her, her broom signaled right there. Absolutely. If they leave it, even if it's a little bit angled, there'd be potential at jam there. It is a big gamble, but uh, could pay off big. Typically, you'll see sh most teams will come down and just make a little bit move on that and just to avoid the possibility of a three ender. But uh, they're going to have a good look at this and discuss it. Right now, she's checking with the front end to see what the, the, the team itself, if they're comfortable and a little bit of gamble there, or if they want to play it a little bit more safe. So. Kind of making it a team decision here. We see a lot more of this team discussion now than we used to. Uh, it used mm -hmm. to be just third and a skip would talk and, you know, front end, try to stay down there. And, but now we see a lot more team discussion. You know, when the lead comes down, you know, it's serious. <laughs> well, the leads are big parts of these teams nowadays, for sure. It's, uh, they're well-rounded. The whole team has uh, input. Uh, the one time you won't see this is in timed events. The unfortunate part about uh, the circuit here is there's no time clock, so the teams definitely take advantage of that. We see some teams more than others discuss, uh, but in other competition, when they get to the top end, uh, when you're what, looking at the time clocks, there's, there's, there would be no discussion for something like this. For sure, or a few and far between at least, where you know that you're sacrificing a lot of comfort later on in the game by taking the time to do that. Correct. Team Cooey never worries about that, but uh, as we've seen them come down to mid, like literally seconds on their clock many different times in curling, 
Uh, but yeah, yeah the, definitely the teams that I've noticed this weekend playing here in Swift Current. Uh, there's been some pretty, pretty slow games uh, just because of the amount of discussion uh, and uh, typically from both sides. I've noticed the same, and, and that is also early season might have something to do with that. These international teams that have uh, performance quotas, you know, they're expected to perform at a certain level, and it's it's a big deal uh, to them especially. And and uh, as they practice, uh, especially these international teams, a lot of the Asian teams specifically, as they practice, they play ends very slowly, trying to understand exactly what the trade-offs mean in these ends so it's it's part of learning it's part of maturing as a curler um but like like you said once the time clocks are ticking there's no way to interpret it you're either on time or you're not absolutely and you can see a good example of these two young very young teams so uh not big experience on either on either side so they're definitely going to want to discuss lots and and uh, like you said they're learning as they go for sure this looks like not a lot of ice for this shot. So we'll see if they can hold the sweepers and maybe they know something that I don't, but that's a uh, pretty aggressive ice for a draw freeze to the back one, which was the call. Anya actually signaled for a little less ice in the hack as well. Very interesting. It could be the type of throw they do too. Decent amount of rotation, nothing lot, particularly. Yeah, a lot of times you'll see it taking less ice if you have an in and out move, but she's a very square thrower, so she squares herself up to the broom. So, mm -hmm. really curling across the center line, as we've seen a couple rocks do so far. Will they get it by? They wow, do. There it goes. So, there you go. It is going to over curl a little bit, but geez, you got to call that a made shot. Yeah, they definitely wanted to get the free, so it just over curled for that, but it is hidden. I don't know mm -hmm. if there's enough room there that they can come down with enough weight to poke it through there. They, if they do, it would sit three, but that's a very difficult shot. There is quite a bit of separation from the top of the house, but. Mm -hmm. Lots of room to curl one in there, make a little tap if that's what you wanted to do. Well, this is an interesting look here. So. Kaya here is pointing out that the fact that if they use that red one, obviously you could try to run the red one straight back, but you'd probably lose the back too. But the other option is just to come down and try to angle that red onto the yellow, keeping your red in play, probably would spin over a bit. And then your shooter would go over to the open, opening up the back. So they look quickly at that. looks like they don't like that shot. Skylar didn't like the looks of that. So they're going to just choose to drop and corner freeze and see if she can make something happen on her last one. But you can definitely yeah. see the difference in ice here. They're taking almost mm -hmm. probably about seven inches more than uh, Stefania there. So they're definitely taking more more ice and uh, possibly again, maybe the way they throw, they feel more comfortable there. This is the ice I was expecting to see on Stefania's uh, first throw. Definite difference in ice. Still an opportunity to get three or maybe even more points here. Lying second and third shot. Yes, if she can get corner throws here, it's set up a big opportunity for a big end. There would be some sort of shot, you would think, so. But gotta make the first one first, so let's see if she can put this on there. They like it out of her hand. It's coming in really nice, keep it curly. All right, unfortunately, came up short, so. But it's a, use, it's a uh, user friendly rock up there. They can definitely bring that back on an angle, so. Yes, yeah. She's definitely going to be looking at how to get another one in there. They're probably going to bring her 
went around half frozen probably or try to get right on the button would be probably ideal for them but they definitely don't want to take that for granted they want to put another one in there so again not taking very much ice this is about as little as ice that you will ever see any of the teams taking to draw to the center line Yeah, she, so she must be adjusting for some type of rotation or, or uh, slide drift or just some way of throwing that she knows she is confident in repeating. Absolutely, like said, because to get to the little. piece of the button, it's typically just inside or where the 8 foot meets the 12 foot uh, would be a typical draw to the button. Uh, this whole weekend, it's been like that. So as you can see, they're taking a lot less. And uh, but again, Depending on the team's throw, they, they, they know better than anybody how they throw it. So we'll see if she buries another one in here. I think the sweepers thought this might have been a little light the way they jumped it at the beginning. It's definitely curling. We can They're see sweeping. from that straight on view. Yeah, they're sweeping for the girls. So they realized it was light and it was over curling. So they used it as a guard. Pretty so significantly was... light. I mean, Jeff, is there a chance they intentionally threw that center guard? Well, all indication was that they were coming around, but now that when we look at it and the, the ice that they took, they might have been just trying to guard that up. Uh, but I, I think she honestly just came out light on that one. The way the, yeah. the sweepers jumped on that immediately, and normally when the sweepers yeah. jump on it, that's a, that's a weight call. So they probably discussed it halfway down and, and came up with a great plan B because they took that that rock that could cost them a three and, and took it out of play. So it worked out good. Now we got a pretty much a straight run back for two uh in a perfect world maybe three but i, I can't see it it's, it would roll over and off there so this would be a yeah. straight back run for for two but uh, that would be a huge two if you really really uh try to butt like go three or bust you can maybe throw it with soft weight try and make that angle tap and keep your shooter around that way yes you could that would be uh, again, very difficult shot, and especially calling the line on that one. But yeah, if you had to, you could make that move. But they've taken a lot of ice here too on this one, so I'm not sure. Maybe they are thinking that, uh, Roy, by the looks of it, they might have been reading your mind, and they're going to go for that. But that's a that's a difficult shot. It adds a lot of variability to what would be the same shot just for two. Absolutely. This is a lot of ice for a run back, so we'll see what kind of weight she's planning here. I didn't see the weight call. With that ice closer, to, it would be bumper or board for that. Looks like that's the weight. It's enough weight to curl for sure. They might be trying to manage the stone for three points. If not two. Big sweep here, coming down the ice. Angle is close. Oh, they overswept it. Oh, that's that's a oh, frustrating one, dear. knowing that you knowing that you threw it good enough to make the shot, but just slightly mismanaged. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful control of weight there that they could have played with it. Yeah, just a little, little excited on the line call. They knew it was close, and uh, unfortunately, they hit the wrong side of the rock. So tough break. So though Team Skylar Ackerman doesn't have anything to show for it, maintaining hammer throughout the game, they're not out of this yet. They'll try to go hard for multiple score in the sixth end when we come back. I've been raised on the farm since day one, so I was born into it. My grandfather, came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. 
I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? Doesn't get much better than that. Our shipment the logos here in for our next event, which is going to be the mixed double. As you can see, there's a few of them. There's roughly 20 logos per sheet to be put in for the mixed doubles, along with a couple of extra little dots. But all our logos come from Jet Ice. They are the best logos to put in. We use them around the world, and they're very easy to install. As you can tell, this is the center ice logo that's going to be going in for the world. This is about a four footer by 10. It's gonna look like a million dollars. Their colors on their logos are always nice and vibrant. And like I said before, very easy to put in. Welcome back, semi-final action between Skylar Ackerman, Stefania Constantini. Some interesting ends. Brewing up here. Lots of opportunity for Ackerman there in the fifth end. A couple things here and there. Put the control back in the hands of Stefania Constantini. A tough shot for two, perhaps three. Nearly made perfectly, but a very difficult uh, scenario. A couple, just a second or two of missed sweep. And the Ackerman roll, rock just rolls a little bit too far to the side, leaving the Constantini stone as a counter for another steal to make it three nothing. Skyler choosing to ignore the two yellows in the house and get behind the corner that they just threw. Trying to generate some opportunity for some extra points. A lot of time you'll see a second guard go up, especially in the this late in the game in the sixth end, uh, to try to generate because they're pretty much looking that uh, they're going to want to try to generate a three, even though they've been scoreless so far. But uh, you definitely want to tighten this up, and, the, and uh, they're going to want to go really hard in the sixth end. So we'll probably see lots of rocks in play. Looks like this should be a pretty good start. This should be able to curl it and get it back. Looks like it'll be three quarters open, so. And Santini will make sure to get up there. They might just, uh, they can't peel the guard yet, so, but they can make a play in the house, so they'll remove that red rock. While they're making that shot, I'll give you a little update on the other semi-final action in the ladies curling. We have Team Ha from Korea against Team Chizil from Regina, Saskatchewan. And Team Ha is up 4-1, to one, and they are in the fifth end. Also in the men's semi-action, we've got Team Japan against Team Korea. That's Yana Gisawa, he is up 4-2 to two over Team Zhuang from Korea, and they are also in the fifth. And our other semi-final action is Kelly Knapp against Steve Laycock, a couple of Saskatchewan teams that are well-liked, great guys, uh, definitely played against each other quite a bit, and Team Laycock has opened up with a, uh, they're sitting 6-2, to two, and they are also in the fifth end and looking pretty solid there so team naps going to have to find some magic here to see if they can uh, do some catch up but still lots of curling left
Beautiful spot for that rock now. Very hard to get that out. And the way it's going to start spinning out of the house is towards that corner guard. So that is a terrific shot made there. Yep, those are the types of angles, freezes, overlaps that you're going to need to score two or more. Absolutely. So pretty easy decision to go up and clear off the guard. And that will move things around and clean up the house more. And she's not worried about taking her own rock out there. She's sitting pretty comfortable with the three nothing lead. So losing hers in the house uh, was definitely some collateral damage. Not too worried about it. Now Skyler will figure out where she wants to put the, the guard and, and know that it'll be chased. And she'll have to plan out her moves a little bit. Now she's looking at the back house and uh, one thing I can tell you for sure is as a sweeper, you're not excited about that shot and judging it to try to hide behind those back ones. And plus with drag effect, that's a pretty dangerous shot probably to pull off right now. So hopefully that she'll decide to, to throw a guard up there and there's really not a wrong place to throw a guard. Just got to get one up there so that they have an opportunity for hopefully a gem and they can generate a, another point in there. Yeah, sweeping a rock to the back of the rings, not only is it something that you just don't do very often, but your your area of confidence, it shrinks significantly as you get closer and closer to that back line. No, absolutely. It's a, it's a very, very difficult shot. and It's a great shot when you can pull it off when you have to, but uh, when you don't have to take those kind of risks, it's best to, to set a guard up front and uh, you can always get a jam. You're, you can always get a nose hit out of it. Uh, some kind of opportunity and and then uh, try to generate an end from there. So this one looks like it's sliding on them and I'm gonna come into the house so they'll just make sure they get it in. This might leave an opportunity, yes, to roll over and if they actually hit this thin enough with just a quarter stone, they could rattle around that red and unlock the yellow, which would be Totally ideal for uh, Constantini here. So she'll be looking at that for sure. If she can get that moving around, make her very happy. Yeah, instead of wasting a rock just on its own, unlocking that, you might be able to hit an opponent's stone and unlock it all in one. Absolutely, so this came up. So now it'll be a decision to come around it and she's not taking any chances. She's gonna get behind there. So great call from a Young Skip here. That team Ackerman has known what they've had to do, just have missed the, the little opportunities to get perfect results out of their shot in order to make it happen. Quite a few times this game, there's been a, situ a favorable situation, and they just haven't quite been able to be precise enough to take advantage of it. Sliding on him here. So showing him half a rock, but uh, again, that's still a good shot. If they would have perfectly buried it, would have forced them into running their own rock back. But uh, showing a piece, so I'm going to tease them with it. And anything as we know can happen with these sh precise shots. Good shot here. Yeah, well swept. Won't change the shot. Another yellow one in there, but won't change Skylar's decision here. She's going to try to get another one in there. They've just saw it come down there. So they know the line and they know the weight. So 
should have a really good opportunity here to bury one and try to get at least three quarters buried. Shot there, and still showed a half, but that's gonna work just fine. There, just trying to put off as long as they can, making that red yellow combination in front of the forefoot, leaving that uh, that situation as kind of a protecting force and leaving their rock in the rings. Will have to be addressed at some point, but we'll put it off as long as possible. No, absolutely. Both skips with a pretty distinctive uh, pre-shot routine. Stefani likes to spin her rock and blow on her hand a few times. Skyler likes to take a deep breath in and stare down the broom. It's good to have a little bit of character with these skips. And, and uh, hey, all eyes are on them at the end of the end. It, they got to do what they got to do to get themselves in the right mindset. Absolutely. Especially with the younger teams, you're definitely going to see that routine more than but not where they're, they've are they been training and practicing to try to get into, we'll call it the zone right before they throw. So everything's similar. Early call here from the skip. Another great shot. So this is going to change things up a little bit because now the draw behind the corner will not be third shot. So Skyler mm -hmm. will have to change up strategy here unless she feels she can make that raise double off there, but might change up thoughts. She might have to make a play on that one now. It's going to be very difficult for her to leave her stone without a double opportunity to being so close. Exactly. Now, could you could you ever leave it what once again one more shot uh, thinking that you you might have that loaded up you could for sure because you know that uh if if you drew behind the corner right now skyler stepped stepped to that strategy and she put one on the t-line Tina would definitely i would believe that she would go after it again if she could uh rather than throwing up a guard but then you're you're chancing that she throws up a guard and if she makes a really good guard then you're you're pretty much out of the end then. So I think she has to probably make the move now. I don't think she can afford to make that kind of gamble. So mm -hmm. she's going to play it a little on the safer side and make this shot now. Hope that her rocks separate enough in an area so that uh, they can't be doubled out and see if she can generate her two. Got a little excited on that sweep, unfortunately. They needed that rock to curl up a little bit more. It did make the double, but they uh, I believe that they should have been really trying to hold that shooter and put that in play. I think that was more important. Mm -hmm. but, well, I'm not sure they needed that much weight either. I mean, they did need to remove both yellow stones, but the angles were perfect to send those out of the rings. I'm not sure they needed to gun that as hard. You're right, the, the, making the double wasn't the big deal out of that shot. It was moving that one and, and just taking the one off the back four. You could actually leave the one in the back four because it would have worked as backing 
and mm -hmm. harder to get the red rock out. But fortunately, we got, uh, again, young team, excited, uh, can throw the weight. And uh, fortunately, just uh, that little bit of inexperience might have got them there. And, and you're right, threw too much weight for that shot needed. And now they're going to be facing three and trying to get a single out of it. So uh, that'll be definitely going in the coach's notes there. And, and uh, again, that's what we, we learn from our, our curling. Learn from our shots, learn from the ends. This team's going to be, an ex yeah, sorry. This team's going to be a really exciting team to watch in the future. Again, they're a young team and uh, it's going to be exciting yeah. to watch them play in the future. Yeah, absolutely. That's, you can see it already. They, they're team chemistry as well. It's a very trusting team. You can tell they have good blood communication. I was just going to say it's it's that's one of the reasons a coach is so important. Sometimes all four of you get in the same sort of psychosis on the ice. You're not really keeping track of those mistakes. So having a coach keeping track really helps you out. No, absolutely. I've uh, I've managed to get to play this game for quite a few years in different situations, and uh, the coaching is where I really love to to work with the the junior teams and the competitive teams. And and uh, I've been coaching with the Sean Meacham team for. For many years now, so they're they're playing right next door with uh, on with Steve Laycock this year. But it's uh, definitely they they rely even those guys that have played a long time. They're relying on the coaches to, to watch for those subtleties. And when you're on the ice, you're you're in such deep emotion. Like you're, it's it's hard to control your emotions, and you get excited when you're sitting there and you see a shot. And so mm -hmm. nice to get those uh, the notes after and and have those debriefs after the game and. And uh, like I said, learn just to make us all better for the next game. Last rock, 610, Skylar Ackerman. Again, this is another interesting uh, way to get the one is trying to do a hit and roll on one in the back eight. You'll see a lot of teams would have went down for the draw, but again, you got to know if you're comfortable. And Skyler was 100% confident with that shot, and she just made an absolute beauty and got her one. Team Ackerman on the board after six ends. They'll have some work to do in the seventh, trying to force her steal against Team Constantine when we come back. We just got our shipment of logos here, and we're asking questions about if our houses are painted or are they logo. Our events are always painted houses but in the future coming out i'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all local houses uh they're a great revenue source for any curling club you can get your advertisements on there and usually after the first year the houses are paid for it's all free money for you so hopefully check it check that ice out for your future in-house local Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Welcome back, 7th end. Team Ackerman forced to a single point in the 6th end here. The Italian team, Costantini. Looking to tick the center guard out of the way. Maintain control of the 7th end. It's a nice... 
managed to knock that off the center line. Very nice. That'll have to change how Skyler wants to put up her guards to maybe avoid the uh, the double. So she's going to relook at it, and you can see she's going to line it up a little closer. Team kind of trying to discuss what's the where the best place to go is. Trying to visualize what Team Constantini will be doing to counter their center guards. Yeah, typically in this situation, you're gonna throw up a high guard into the the zone one or just over the hog line. I'm not sure if that's still the call. I that was her first call anyway. With the with this little ice. We might be trying to put another one up right on top of their current guard and just say, hey, the four foot line is where we make our stand. Yeah, no, that's the call. They're just going to try to put one just over the hog line in the zone one. You take advantage of the, uh, the free guard zone and have two two rocks up there that can't be removed. Well, the girls hope we didn't leave it too long. Come on, girls. Oh, dear. Uh, A little bit of a sweeping error there. They didn't realize how short that was. So that's a tough one. You got to revamp though. Go down and say it's okay and take a deep breath. And you still got one guard up there and you can still yep. generate quite the end from that. Yep, all it takes is one. Especially with uh, Team Constantini leaving it as it is. Not making any other tick attempt on that guard. Skylar Ackerman knows the next few rocks that'll be coming will have some weight on them. Every red rock will be a target. So they'll try to create some separation between their guards. Jumped on this pretty early, so I want to make sure this time. Looks like they have a good look on it this time now. Again, they're trying to leave it as high as possible, making sure it's in play though, which they've done a terrific job this time. Skyler will have to decide if she wants to come in yet or if she wants to put another what, tall one, high one out there. Normally we'll see one more go up front, but. I think the front end's thinking that uh, it's time for one more guard yet, but it's always scary when you see those two yellow rocks in there and when you don't have the hammer that you should make a play on them, but. One yeah. more, she says. So. Second rock thrower, Taylor Krimmick. Might see her take a crack at the double with this one. 
that angle. Let you going with the safe one at a time there. Yeah, with the with the angle on those, I thought it might be worth it to take on the double, but not not super important and definitely you could make things worse. Yeah, they could definitely could have uh, the angle could have sent the red into the house, uh, which we, we've all seen. Uh, but uh, yeah, she's pretty confident with one at a time and only leaving one red rock in play. So. I believe we'll probably see it come around now. Another fear would be jamming the peel, rolling your shooter to the center line, and ending up with two even more dangerous guards than you looked at before. Correct. Which is something, as a, as a curler gaining experience, you only need to get burned by in order to really learn. It does happen. You think it might be really unlucky and fluky, but that's definitely in the realm of possibility every time you go for a double peel. And she jumped up there to peel it off, but now she's definitely having a second look talking through things. Now she's trying to think of maybe going for the double, which I think the last one was actually easier than this one, but they're going to have a look at it and they think it's worth the risk now to try to take both of those off. She's definitely tightening the ice up over what she had before, so let's see if she can have her sweepers hold it. Oh, she threw this one outside, so we're just going to see another straight peel. Look at that ice. It looks like Skyler's calling for another one out front, so she's being very, very, very patient here. Normally we'd see a move into the house by now, but staying very patient. Multiple guards being thrown and rethrown seem to be the right thing to do. Is uh, Constantini will waste another rock just peeling one of these guards off? Trying to go for the back one. Ooh, dangerous. Play there almost blows by them both. They do end up getting the more valuable guard as far as they figured. Yeah, a couple different decisions here to look at now. With that uh, guard being so high, you can come around from either side. So hiding a perfect rock is very, very difficult because you can, on, on, especially on ice like this, you can access it from both ways. So she's, instead of just going for the straight draw, she's going to make sure that she gets rid of at least one yellow rock and tries for the hit and roll, or as she's looking there, trying to hide behind the yellow rock that's already on there and forcing their opponents to play their own rock onto theirs. 
Mm-hmm. Knowing that giving up a score of two to Constantini would likely mean the game, it's not so important, um, the risk factor of how much you might give up. It's, it's all about just giving yourself the very best chance of scoring a point here or, at, at the worst, forcing Constantini to one. Although the force to one is looking pretty bleak. Yeah, it's uh, they're gonna have to do some magic here to generate a, a steal. Skyler's definitely gonna look at every option though, and she's ready to throw that rock. Is hitting that back one and rolling over is no easy task, but I, I, I think that's a great call on her part to, uh, to try to generate something over there to get them thinking about it. team discussion here. Mm -hmm. Well, as you mentioned, we are only in the seventh end, but it literally a dual score here could mean the ball game. So they are, uh, it's, this is a big, big decision that they're doing here. Mm -hmm. I like the play here. It's going to definitely make things interesting, especially if she can get half underneath that yellow rock or even three quarters buried. Definitely lead for an interesting shot. Very impressive, big situation, but going through a routine, doing what she's been trained to do, and throwing the rock. So let's have a look. It's pretty close so far. They got to keep a close eye on this, make sure it doesn't bust too much at the end on them. Looks like she's got a great shot here. Wow. She's really well managed, and I think just like just like me, they expected that to roll a little further. Right. Yes, that was a pretty uh, pretty flat roll. It it uh, didn't have much action afterwards. Looked like for sure it was going to get over there enough, and just with the the, the weight on it, it just uh, stopped there. But that was literally three quarters of a rock from a just absolutely tremendous shot. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, showing the full rock here, so this will be a a tough one to uh, to find a hiding spot after this shot is thrown. Yeah, those exact hit and rolls are just are are just very difficult. Like, I know they there isn't as much visual entertainment as like a run back double or something like that, but making an exact hit and roll is a very challenging thing to do. Stefani would like to keep this stone in the ring, if he could. Sweeper's right off, hoping to get enough of the rock to stick around. And they'll get it. No freeze really available on that stone. It looks like Skylar's going to attempt the same shot she just did, so she should be able to control that. So. Should work out pretty good. Hopefully they can bury one in there and see if they can create some action. Just in some other updated action, we've got the Nap and Laycock game and Laycock scored two in the six to go two and eight to three. And that's finished now. So that is a victory. So Laycock is in the finals. That'll feel yeah. good for Team Laycock. Exited earlier in the playoffs uh, a couple weekends ago versus Yanagasawa. A very interesting game I was streaming. Laycock gave up four in the fourth end. 
on a, just a, a bit of a missed tap freeze shot. Very kind of disappointing result for a game that was really uh, not dominated, but but uh, Laycock had the advantage in that game, exited in the quarterfinals. So this time they will make it to the final in Swift Current. And just another update in our other ladies, or in the women's semi-action. Uh, that's tightening up a little bit. It's currently hot, is from Korea, is up four to three over Team Tisdale. And they are in the sixth end. Big game there. Skyler makes her roll perfectly this time. Learned from the previous one. They, they threw a little less weight and hit a much sharper angle to get a... Uh, a more actionable roll, manage that into the back forefoot and put it right where they want it to. Absolutely, there's always the risk here. Obviously, it, it is a short run back. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, but anything can happen, like I said, and if you get that, all you can hope for in Skyler's situation here is a miss, uh, but what a beautiful shot and what a beautiful way to play it and put some pressure back now. So let's see what happens. Silva Stefania Constantini. For two points and a one hand on the the victory of this game run back for two points was a touch wide but looks like she's nailed this one so fantastic shot scored her two moving to five to one after seven coming home so girls will decide if they want to throw them back four point deficit is very, very difficult. But. Oh, they're going to give and the girls take. at least a break. Yes, so sportsmanship there for sure. And uh, like I said, we're going to see some great action in the future from this Ackerman team. Uh, young and lots of talent there. And uh, just a, a great, great event with their only their first loss of the event. Yeah, the Ackerman team really showed a lot of uh, maturity and, and know-how here. Today, a semi-final finish in a field this this great. Like you mentioned, Jeff, a winning streak to get them into the playoffs. That's Absolutely. a great showing from the young Skylar Ackerman team. Absolutely. It's just great to see the, the young talent coming through, and uh, they're just going to get stronger and stronger as they go and learn from each game. And, and just to put off, like you said, a semi-final in, at this level, in this caliber, that's just fantastic and that'll boost up the confidence for sure and and uh, we'll see lots more of them well be sure to join us for the final 4 p.m today in uh, mountain time alberta saskatchewan time i'm rory mccusker jeff chambers thanks for joining us today and we'll see you later for the final at four Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. I've been raised on the farm since day one, so you know, I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother? 
with your kids by your side. Doesn't get much better than that. <laughs>